How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang and welcome back. In today's game, I'm playing my Maricel deck, keeping Staff of Domination, Tree of Perdition, Vishano Heretic, Sunken Ruins, Sunken Hollow, Mindstone, and Command Tower. Derek is playing Obun, keeping Sylvan Advocate, Oracle of Moldiah, Together Forever, Path to Exile, Mountain, and a Treetop Village. Chris is playing as a Kiri deck again, keeping a Relic Seeker, Rugged Prairie, Snow Covered Plains, Stoneforge Mystic, Boros Charm, Valakut Awakening, and a Wheel of Fortune. Mark is playing Kanji, keeping two planes, an island, Tithe, Avon Wind Guide, Vanquisher's Banner, and Soulcatcher's Airy. Derek wins the die roll and starts us off. Derek plays a tap treetop village, passing. I play command tower and pass. Chris plays a rugged prairie and passes. Mark has a plains and he passes to Derek. Derek plays a tap stirring wildwood, passing. I play a Sunken Ruins for turn, and tap 2 mana for a Mind Stone. Chris draws, playing a Snow Covered Plains as a land drop. He casts a Relic Seeker, and passes. Mark plays an Island, and casts his Soul Catcher's Eerie. Derek has a Force for turn, and casts Sylvan Advocate. I draw, and play a Tap Sunken Hollow. Chris draws, and goes to combat. He swings the Relic Seeker at Mark, but before damage, Derek uses Path to Exile to get rid of it. This has Chris finding a land instead of the equipment that he wanted, and much to his sadness, he puts out a Plains. He then casts a Stoneforge Mystic in his second main phase, and goes to tutor for an equipment anyway. Mark draws, and plays an Augury Owl. He scries 3 as it comes in, and keeps 2 on top, and bottoms 1, passing to Derek. Derek plays a Terrain Generator, and taps out for Oracle of Moldiah. He plays a Mountain off the top of his library, and goes to combat, swinging the Advocate at Chris for 2. At the end of turn, I cast Thrill of Possibilities, discarding Tree of Perdition, and then drawing 2. I play an Urborg for my land drop, and tap 4 mana for Marisil. He comes in, and exiles with a Cage Counter the Tree of Perdition from my graveyard, and I then pass to Chris. Chris plays an Ameri of the Sky Ruins, which comes in tapped. He casts Mask of Memory, and equips it onto the Stoneforge, and thinks about attacking. He goes at Mark, who lets it through for 1, and Chris gets the Mask Trigger, drawing 2, and then discarding 1. He passes. Mark draws, and plays an Island. 4 mana gets him an Avon Wind Guide, and he keeps his Flyers back as blockers, passing. Derek draws, and reveals his top card for the Oracle ability. He plays Obun in his main phase, and then plays a tapped Raging Ravine, which gives Obun a landfall trigger. Derek puts the plus one plus one counter onto his commander, and he moves to combat, making the treetop village into a 4-4, which also gets plus two plus two from the Advocate. He swings it at me, and I take six, and Derek then passes. I play an Inventor's Fair, and cast Careful Study, drawing two, and discarding two. I pitch a Staff of Domination and the Fashano Heretic. I then tap most of the rest of my mana for a Spark Double, having it come in as a copy of Marisil. I exile the Staff of Domination to the Marisil copy trigger entering, and it also comes in with a plus one plus one counter, and I pass to Chris. Chris untaps and draws, plain of planes. He activates the Stoneforge Mystic and puts out a World Slayer, threatening Derek. He then casts a Kiri, and passes. Mark draws, and plays a Plains. He swings his Avon Wind Guide at me, and the Augury Owl at Chris. 
I take two while Chris takes one, and in his second main phase, Mark then plays a Vanquisher's banner, naming birds, and passes. Derek draws and reveals a library off the top of his library. He plays Earth Surge in his main phase and goes to combat. He has Obun animate the Raging Ravine, making it 4-4, which is pumped by plus 2 plus 2 from both the Advocate and the Earth Surge. The Ravine heads at me while the Advocate heads at Mark. Mark blocks with the Wind Guide while I take 8. With the Guide dying, Mark gets to put a counter onto his Aerie. For my turn, I play a tap Temple of Deceit, scrying one, and bottoming the card, and then just passing. Chris untaps and draws, casting a Seal Shaper's Gift in his main phase, and he goes into his library, revealing Hammer of Nizan. I feel like this is one of the first finds for any kind of equipment-based deck nowadays, and he casts it, and attaches it to a Kiri as it enters. Moving to combat, Chris swings a Kiri at me and the Stoneforge at Mark. This lets him draw a card for each player he's attacking thanks to Akiri, and Mark takes the one while I block with Marisil. Chris gets to get a mass trigger again, and he draws two and discards one. He then plays a strip mine for turn, and passes. Mark draws and plays out Magus with a moat. With his defenses now decently up, Mark feels comfortable enough to attack Derek with the Augury Owl for three, and he then passes. Derek draws and reveals his top card. He casts a Sylvan Library, and then plays an Embodiment of Fury. With his ability to attack more or less shut off from the Magus, Derek then passes. At the end of turn, I cast Frantic Search to draw two and discard two, and then untap three lands. I then pay five to use the Spark Double version of Marisil to use the Staff of Domination's ability to draw a card. I draw for turn, and cast Demonic Tutor in my main phase. I play out a Talisman of Dominance, and then pass to Chris. Chris untaps, and draws, and plays out Open the Armory to find even more equipment, putting to hand to Helm of the Host. He casts it, and equips it to the Stoneforge Mystic once it hits the field with the trigger from the hammer. Chris then plays a Buried Ruin for his land for turn, and moves to combat. Chris gets a token copy of the Stoneforge at the beginning of combat, and goes to find another equipment card. He can't really attack, and tutors for the card while passing. Mark draws, and plays Favorable Winds. He goes to combat, and like the migratory route of many birds, the Augury Owl once more returns to Derek's face to rest. He then passes turn. Derek draws and uses his library trigger, taking 8 to keep the two spare cards. He reveals a Temple Garden off the top, and plays it, taking a further 2 to have it come in untapped. He casts Explore, drawing a card and revealing Mina and Den off the top. Derek then plays Together Forever, and puts a counter onto his oracle and Sylvan Advocate. I draw and play a Swamp. I recast Marisil in my main phase, exiling a Hate Flare to the end of the battlefield trigger with a Cage Counter. I then pass turn. Chris draws for turn and plays out Sram. He then casts Wheel of Fortune and we discard our hands and draw a fresh 7. Derek has to show us what he drew because of the oracle and it's mostly land based cards. Chris then activates the token copy of Stoneforge to put on Argentum armor, and equips it onto a Kiri. Chris then moves to his combat step, getting another Stoneforge Mystic token, and going to find an equipment as he passes. Mark plays a Plains, and casts a Judge's Familiar, drawing as he casts it from the banner. Three mana gets him in on the equipment plan, and he then plays out a Rest in Peace afterwards. This exiles all graveyards, and Mark then passes. Derek draws and uses his library trigger, but doesn't keep any spares. He plays a forest off the top, getting an Obun landfall trigger, and he puts the counter onto his commander. He then plays another forest off the top, getting another trigger, and then casts Mina and Den, and then one of those fancy Inkamoth nexuses. This triggers Obun's landfall again, and Derek puts the plus one plus one counter onto his commander. We then see Nisa Vital Force, which he upticks to untap a land. Derek then casts a crop rotation, sacrificing a land, and the spell and land both get exiled as they hit the yard. Derek still gets to go into his library to find a core haven, and puts it to field. This triggers Obun again, and Derek then passes. At the end of turn, I use the Spark Double version of Marisil to activate his Tree of Perdition. I swap its toughness of 5 with Chris's life total. I draw and play a Flamekin Village, which comes in tapped. I then cast a Thousand Year Elixir, and pass. Chris untaps, and draws. 
He casts Soul Ring and moves to combat, making another Stoneforge Mystic. He grabs the Sword of Cauldra, and in his second main phase, activates all three Stoneforge Mystics, assembling, assembling Cauldra, Cauldra once, once more, more Tomer. Tomer. He then pays the one to activate the assembled Cauldra ability, making a token copy of it and equipping it with all of the gear. He then passes it to Mark. Mark draws and plays an island. He gives the Magus the Sword of Fire and Ice and casts a Skull Clamp. He puts it onto the Magus as well and sends the Augury Owl at Derek for four. He then passes turn. Derek once more uses his library but doesn't keep any extras. He plays a Plains, getting a trigger from Obun. He then upticks Nissa to untap a land and he casts Kadama's Reach. He then finds a force for the field, getting Obun another trigger, and putting a land to hand. He reveals off the top after shuffling, playing a planes off the top, and then a mountain, getting an Obun trigger for both. He animates a land with the embodiment, and then moves to put to stack Hour of Revelation. With that ability on the stack, I activate the real version of Maricel as the Tree of Perdition, making Derek's life total 4, and then pay to activate it once that resolves as the Hate Flayer to have Marisil deal the four needed to take Derek out. My turn has me drawing and playing an island. I pay to have the spark double tap itself to gain me some life with the staff, and then untap it with the flare to take out Chris. Mark at this point realizes he's probably not going to be able to fight through my blasting him for a fair amount of damage with Marisil copies each turn, and he concedes the game to me. Game review time. So Marisil worked out beautifully in this game, and I didn't even have to attack or do anything crazy. Well, I guess kind of crazy with the tree and the hate flare combo. But I can understand people being hesitant to build this deck since you typically want to find Nevin Yarval's disc and then just basically lock down the boards that way. It can be cute the first time, but gets kind of repetitive. I think Chris did a great job of piling into Kiri, and he's able to assemble Cauldre yet again. The main detractor, which seemed to stop him and Derek in this game, was the Magus of the Moat. I know Derek in particular was regretting using the Path to Exile earlier on on the Relic Seeker. This was actually filmed before the new version of Kanji came out. Although I wouldn't call the uncommon version of Kanji better, I could easily see it slotting into the 99. And part of the reason that I like these kind of decks, especially the weird tribal ones, are that you get to run weird cards. All in all, it was a really fun game, and I hope in a few months' time to be able to start filming again in person. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.